What's up, Taiwan? I'm Jaime Okan with 10 minutes of news from here in Taiwan and around the world. President Tsai Ing-wen has appointed a new premier to lead the country's cabinet. Former Vice President Ten Tianren will take up the role and choose new government ministers in the coming days. As Rick Lau reports, it comes at a critical time for the country's ruling party. Well, it's a new lunar year here in Taiwan, and it's also time for a new cabinet lineup, announced by the country's leader here at the presidential office. The ruling Democratic Progressive Party, or the DPP, hopes that a reshuffle will turn around their political fortunes after a massive local election loss late last year. President Tsai Ing-wen has picked Chen Jianren, a former vice president, as her new premier and head of the cabinet. It will be up to him to decide who gets which roles in the government, set to be announced in the coming days. So in this very difficult time, in the next one year, to strengthen Taiwan's economic resilience, 环境韧性还有社会韧性是很重要的三个目标。来，我们需要积极照顾人民的生活，让台湾继续成为两千三百万人幸福生活、团结共好的一个国家。而且，这也是我们内阁最重要的一个使命。Chen comes to office as the DPP scrambles to win back support. The party suffered its worst ever defeat in November's local elections. And an internal review of why that happened blamed a drop in support from young and moderate voters, particularly on issues like the impact of COVID-19, inflation, and mandatory military service. After a battering in local polls and a slump in the president's approval rating, things are looking precarious for Taiwan's ruling party. All eyes will now be on this new cabinet to see if they can change that ahead of the all-important presidential elections now less than one year away. Damon Lin and Rick Lowett in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. Nikkei Asia says a retired U.S. admiral who led the military across more than half the planet will visit Taiwan next week. Philip Davidson was commander of the United States Indo-Pacific Command from 2018 to 2021. Nikkei Asia reports that he'll land in Taiwan on Monday and meet with President Tsai Ing-wen. Davidson is known for being one of the first U.S. defense officials to suggest that China will invade Taiwan by the year 2027. The report announcing his trip comes just after news of another potential visitor. U.S. media say newly appointed House Speaker Kevin McCarthy plans to travel to Taiwan in the spring. Taiwan's Weather Bureau is warning of cold temperatures and strong winds across most of the country. Forecasts for Friday show Taipei will be one of the coldest parts of Taiwan, with temperatures dropping as low as 9 degrees Celsius. The country's cold snap comes as a wave of severe weather continues to batter much of Asia. Heavy snow is still falling in large parts of Japan and South Korea. In the past few days, China's northernmost city has seen temperatures as low as minus 53 degrees Celsius, the lowest ever recorded. And in Afghanistan, more than 100 people have frozen to death in the past week as temperatures dip below zero. People who bought flowers for this Lunar New Year were in for a bit of a surprise. Prices have gone up recently and have even doubled, especially in the case of prized flowers. John Van Trias takes us to a Taipei flower market to see what effect this is having. It's the busiest time of year at Taipei's Jianguo Holiday Flower Market. Usually open only on weekends, it's open every day in the run-up to the Lunar New Year because of the high demand. This year, stall holders are charging a premium, in part due to supply issues. Moth orchids, a seasonal favorite, have doubled in price. A set of 20 will now set buyers back close to 170 US dollars. Some say higher costs are dampening demand. 珍珠菊的話都長到兩層左右,因為竹柏的部分大概也都長到三層,黃金萬兩花今年是就是沒有漲價的,今年買季有下滑到兩到三層。But here at the market there are still those willing to pay. 我每年都要買蓮花,因為那過年嘛,然後擺佛堂啊,家裡就很起起吉祥,黃色的大吉大利,對。
That means the vendors here, at least, can bank on a prosperous start to the Year of the Rabbit. Damon Lin and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. As Taiwan rings in the Year of the Rabbit, some good news in the animal kingdom. The last decade has seen an increase in the global number of tigers. That was last year's zodiac animal. But tigers remain on the endangered species list, and conservationists are still working to protect them. Sally Jensen reports. Twelve years ago, during the last year of the tiger, Nepal pledged to double the number of tigers in the country by 2022. But it went even further. The number of tigers in Nepal has now tripled since 2010. This is thrilling news for conservationists who have long worked to preserve one of the world's most endangered animals. Basic principle is if you conserve the tigers, then you can automatically can conserve their prey and grasslands and wetlands and ecosystem as a whole. That's why this species has a number of implications. Nepal is one of 13 tiger range countries that made the pledge to protect the species in 2010. At the time, there were only 121 of the big cats left in the country. Now, as conservation efforts have expanded, the global tiger population has bounced back. Their numbers have increased from 3,200 in 2015 to 4,500 in 2022. But on the International Union for Conservation of Nature's red list of threatened species, the tiger is still classified as endangered. In the last century, tiger numbers plummeted from around 100,000. That drop was largely due to poaching for the illegal wildlife trade, habitat loss and conflict with people. However, tigers around the world logged a few small wins last year. One was a successful transfer of a critically endangered Sumatran tiger to Chester Zoo. And also a fifth Bengal tiger cub was born at a zoo in Cuba. And as worldwide, the big cats numbers continue to claw their way back up, the rest of the world can celebrate a roaring year for the tiger. Ethan Pan and Sally Jensen for Taiwan Plus. Former NBA basketball sensation Jeremy Lin has signed for a team in Taiwan. He'll join the Kaohsiung 17 Live Steelers once the club agrees to a timeline for his arrival. Lin rose to stardom in 2012 with a series of astonishing performances for the New York Knicks. That sparked a cultural craze known as Lin Sanity. Lin was also the first American of Taiwanese or Chinese descent to play in the NBA and the first to win a championship. He comes to Taiwan after a stint playing in China for the Guangzhou Long Lions. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally today, we'll leave you with the images of a variety of flowers blooming along a riverside park in the capital city of Taipei. I'm Hamil Khan. Take care and see you next time. time for lots of eating and drinking for spending time with your loved ones for buying new clothes playing maja winning money <laughs> this year taiwan plus news presents a series of holiday specials to help you ring in the year of the rabbit have a fantastic year of the rabbit happy year of the rabbit from all of us at Taiwan Plus News. Happy New Year! <laughs> Taiwan Plus. Happy New Year! For more stories from Taiwan that tower above the rest, please download the Taiwan Plus app.